YouTube and hello Ninth Age community. This is Charles Evershade Gaming and I've got another Ninth Age Battle Report. Continuing with playing Infernal Dwarves, I've got Infernal Dwarves against Ogre Cons. Little 40, 500 point list. Um, my opponent still has got a bull, but uh, it's a little bit different than his last list. Uh, we, play as, we played Refused Flank and Secure Target. So this is our battlefield, as you can see we got refuse flank down, don't worry, we will remove the ruler um, when we start playing. So uh, I have the side with the hill and the ruins, we got a couple forests in the middle being dissected, and then my opponent's got a field and a water terrain feature, as well as a piece of impassable on his side. And I'm just going to put the army lists in the description of the video. I'll give you a quick overview of his army. He's got four units of four vassals. Um, like I guess the, the core guys, I can't, the vassal levies, I think they're called right now. Uh, I want to say they just have spears and full clan. He's got, I want to say, 15 or 18 gray weapon blunderbuss uh, infernal warriors with probably at least maybe champion musician. And he's got uh, one thing of five Vassal Cavalry. He's got a BSB on a Bull Schmutt. I know he's got a one-up armor save with the Ghostly Guard. I'm not sure if he's got anything else, uh, anything other than that. He's got four Truck Anointed. I know they have the trial of Ashruck Banner. So the minus, you know, or MR2 on the whole unit uh, for anything. And then he's got two Infernal Giants. He's got another great Bull of Schmutt. Uh, this has got a prophet on there with occultism, and then he also has a Kadeem chariot. So, since we're playing secure target, I put mine down first. Uh, I put mine next to this in passable piece. And quick picture of my spells. I got Children of Umi, obviously, and then Break the Spirit, Totemic Summon, Wig of the Beast, and Savage Fury. Try and Shamanism with this army build. Uh, I'm not in love with Shamanism. Um, mostly I have a hard time with, oh, just how little offensive ability it has, obviously. Um, yeah, I didn't end up taking the, um, because my opponent doesn't have a ton of shooting. Obviously, uh, Chilling Howl is good against his occultism guy, but he had, he does have the MR2 on him. I know, I remember that. You'll see that in the list, too. So, uh, this is where my opponent places his. Uh, his he also has a, a vassal shaman who has Raven's Wing in the real turns. And then his occultism Great Bull Shemut Prophet has Pentagram of Pain, Hint Glory, Grave Calls, and Breath Corruption. So all very good spells. And this is my opponent's plant. So I got to pick table slides. He got to play first, and he plopped as... Uh, as some are wont to do. So starting on the left, going towards the right, he's got four truck anointed, he's got his Kadeem Chariot, he's got his BSB on a bowl of Shemut. He's got one of his armored giants with a tower shield. He's got, uh, you can see that's uh, his 20 vassals with his vassal shaman. He's got his five vassal cavalry behind his great bull in the middle there. He's got his, looks like might even be 20, uh, Great Weapon Warrior Blunderbuss dudes. Um, and then he's got another Armored Giant, another Kadeem Chariot, and he's got his three other vassals, all chilling on the right flank over there. So this is looking at my army for deployment. So I've got, starting on the left, going towards the right, i got four Tusker uh, Cavalry boys. They are armed with pair weapons, and they just have a musician in their unit. Uh, then I have a... Actually, I think, I've, I think I have full command, actually. Yeah. Uh, and then I have a pupper, um, or caddy, or whichever. It's a dog, so it's a wolf, I guess. So it's a wolfie. Then I have a scratapult in the ruin, a thunder cannon in the ruin, a big block of tribesmen with my BSB in there, and my shaman. So my BSB's got a banner of speed on him, and he has the Viper's Curse, and my unit has a great, you know, great grass sky pendant for the Swiss Ride, um, 
and he's got uh, so my bsp has got the shooting pistol shots. My shaman is you know shamanism with magical heirloom. He's got the ritual blood letter. I've got four uh, bombardiers. I've got a rock rock on the hill. I've got a giant on the hill. I have another wolfie, and then I have two bruiser sticks holding down my right flank. So my opponent uh, vanguards up. And then this is going into Infernal Dwarfs turn one. So my opponent uh, chaffs my giant and rock rock, which now seems like a really bad idea. And uh, pretty much just moves up with everything as much as he can. You know, he moves up pretty aggressively with his truck anointed. He moves up his chariot and his giant and his BSB. Yeah, everything just moves up as much as it can. The middle holds back maybe just a teensy bit because I do have a pretty long charge range with my... Uh, big unit of tribesmen, so and he, he doesn't really uh, let me get that off. But other than that, he uh, you know he really moves forward with just about everything. Uh, he's able to use a pentagram of pain to get rid of my dog, which was painful. There's the card, uh, and then that's about it for magic. He also shot over here. Um, thankfully, only did two wounds, so that's nice. And then the vassal cavalry. Uh, Get in, uh, put an incendiary marker on the rock or rock, but uh, they don't cause a wound or anything. So, going into Ogre Cons turn two, uh, or turn one, sorry, uh, we have to immediately start chaffing. Uh, so, the Bruiser Six come forward to chaff both the Anointed and one of the Armored Giants. I charge with my Giant into the Vassal Cavalry. I actually charged with my big unit of tribesmen into the blunderbuss unit. Uh, I, I think it was like an 11, uh, so far charge, but I figured I really didn't have a lot to lose turn one. Um, obviously, it could be counter charge, but um, I want a giant and a great bull, so yeah, let's go for it, and uh, I didn't make it, so uh, they moved forward a little bit, and I moved my bombardiers up a little bit too. I really was not sure what to shoot. Uh, since I just feel like I didn't have a lot of great targets, um, but I think I'm going for the Chariot, um, with the idea of doing some wounds to it, maybe. Uh, Cannon and, uh, you know, Scratapult just pivot accordingly to shoot at where they want to shoot at, and uh, the Tuskeries are, uh, uh, kind of holding back a little bit, um, as there's quite a bit of stuff on his right flank right There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff on his right and left flank, actually. <laughs> Uh, since I did move forward and I'm within charge range, I wanted to get a couple buffs off, so I got Savage Fury and I got Awakened Beast for, I want to say, Strength. Uh, I turn one, I miss fire with my cannon, I take a wound, so that's a bit of a bummer. Scratapult does hit and uh, does a decent job moving some dwarves, so they're down to 12 models, it looks like. Again, I, can't, I think there might have only been 15 in that unit. Uh, combat with the giant goes so-so, so he only kills three and they get away. I did decide to pursue and kind of wish I didn't, like kind of looking at it now. Um, at the time, I, I was thinking it'd be nice to be up there in his grill, possibly, but you'll see what happens with the giant. So this is uh, pretty much how the end of turn one looks like for both sides. Going into Infernal Dwarf's turn two. So he decides to charge the giant um, into my bruiser stick. And the first I'm thinking I'm going to hold. And then he charges a Kadim Cherry in the flank. And I definitely didn't see that. And I definitely left my giant in a bad spot. Because he would have easily beat up on the bruiser sticks and then be able to get into the giant. So I decide just to flee to give the Cherry a longer charge. Because I'm thinking if he just puts his giant into me, that's not too bad. The <coughs> excuse me, the bull on uh, the the BSP on the bull. He charged the bruisers too, and then he failed to redirect surprisingly. So at this point, I you know when the when the chariot was going to come in, I just that was I already knew that the bull wasn't going anywhere. So I decided to hold with everything, and unfortunately he made it with both. The cherry and a giant. The cherry, I want to say, had like a nice 11 inch charge or something like that. Like maybe even a 12. It's pretty far, but he was able to get in, which is going to be good for him because he's going to be able to kind of catch that bruiser stick anyway. 
and he gets to whoop on my giant this turn. Uh, as you can see, the anointed go into the other bruiser stick, and that's pretty much about it. Had to chaff really heavily on the left wing. So, um, one of the giants comes up to kind of pretty much chaff my uh, big unit of uh, tribesmen. His bull moves up quite aggressively because um, it's out of my charge arc with my rock a rock. And it can see the rock rock and it can kind of pick on the bombardiers if it wants. And one of the tribesmen units comes forward to kind of, I guess, really chaff the the Tusker calf. And as you can see, the other vassals are kind of in step with the chariot. Um, thankfully, I do have one wolf alive over there if I can keep it alive. Oh, my opponent gets a big grave calls off and he has five wounds to my rock rock. Oh, God, that was just bad. Oof, it was, I want to say it was definitely like a, like a three or four dice throw. Probably four dice. I want to say my opponent got a 20 plus on his dice roll. It's just not worth it for me to spell it. And of course, ton of hits and he wounds really well so uh that was a bummer um glad it's not dead but definitely painful and i want to say that's it. it looks like yep the that's right the um the blunderbusses shoot the tribesmen block and they do i think four wounds it looks like they killed one that was on the back and did an extra wound to another guy so that's a pretty good uh, round of shooting uh, and then this is the combat here. So as you can see, um, that, that red wound marker on my giant is three, so they did five wounds to me. Uh, unfortunately, I, I kind of felt like this really burning desire to try and kill the chariot. I, it was really stupid. I end up putting all my attacks on the chariot, only doing two. I think it did four wounds total, so I could have killed it. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just got an age of save. Should have done the wounds to the giant. I think that would have been smarter, even though I didn't want to give the giant more attacks. Um, I ended up breaking with my giant. Uh, I had this really, I had this really weird thought. I was like, I killed the chariot. I might only lose by a lot, <laughs> but I lost by a lot still. Um, and the giant flees. He gets pursued down, and as you can see, the chariot. Um, gets caught uh, or catches the bruisers and then is just right there um, so yeah uh, so going into my turn uh, my turn two I charge with my rock rock into the chariot this is where I was also like why, why did I not just leave this thing for the rock rock uh, I charge the rock rock into the chariot and I charge my tribesmen into the giant I also hit the giant in the flank with my chariot or my scratapult one of my chariots I charge my tuskers into one of the vassal calf and I chaff his Kadeem chariot so uh, I was actually feeling like in a pretty good spot at this point almost because I'm thinking if I can just blow through the chariot I can maybe get his BSB and you know by you know since the BSB is such a bad position because he couldn't he had a he had a fail charge last turn and yeah we'll see what we can do against this great bull uh this is actually uh, my, my uh we had somebody there um this is not my opponent but he took a picture on his phone just another kind of angle um which i thought was kind of interesting to kind of see this corridor in the middle of combats plus all these giant models <laughs> ninth age am i right uh cannon uh hits wounds five wounds on his uh his dude right here so I felt really good about that um, unfortunately I wish my bum ears could have shot that would have been amazing um, but unfortunately uh, the, the, he's just gonna have to sand five wounds this turn uh, my magic phase was a complete dud a except for this sorry that's actually not that's a bit of an understanding I was able to bring a titanic summon up and just able to chaff these guys so that was also very helpful for my rock rock who has no problem killing the Kadeem Chariot and is able to get into the BSB, which is great. And over here, we, I want to say between Impact Hits and the Chariot, um, I think we got about six wounds on this guy, but we, I think we end up, I think somebody ends up, I think the Tribes ended up putting the last wound on him. The Chariot takes four wounds from the Giant, so it almost gets killed by the Giant. Um, and then I think I just end up reforming over there. Uh, in this combat, we almost wipe these guys to a man. Um, 
the Castle Chieftain with his two wounds. He's got one wound left, so... Um, and then I make this big mistake of pursuing him down, or trying to pursue him down, not catching him, and putting myself in a terrible position, which you'll see in the next turn. And the terrible positioning is that I was chaffing this chariot quite nicely, except I left this easy flank for these vassals and left them a possible flank on... Um, my Tuskers. So big mistake there. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, I was not happy about that. I easily could have just held back with the Tuskers, let that one model fly off the board. I mean, he's rallying on like a four. And yeah, oh, oh, don't know what I was doing. Don't know what I was thinking. So he ends up charging uh, the one vassal unit in the front of my Tuskers. He really debated about this. He kind of wanted to be able to get into combat all this turn. So his idea was, I'll go into the dog, kill it, overrun into the flank. Then I've got, you know, like all this combat res, and I could probably break the Tuskers. And he was also thinking about his magic phase with real turns. So we'll get to that. So this giant charges here. That's a double picture. Uh, these guys charge here. And this is what we're looking like. Um, after movement, so uh, he brings up his dogs to chaff my tribesmen block. Uh, as you can see where the rest of my uh, kind of ogres are in the middle, um, and uh, my opponent moves his bull behind the hill. I can't, couldn't quite get him uh, all the way past, um, you know, the the hill. Um, so if the cannon moves, it can it can shoot him. Uh, so thinking about that, my uh, opponent wants to throw Ravenwing to move him. And he also casts uh, Wheel Turns on the Tuskers, which I felt compelled to dispel. I really wanted to give the Tuskers a fighting chance to possibly not break from all that combat res. So instead, my opponent gets Pentagram of Pain off. And in the most painful thing ever, kills the Rock a Rock with a brilliant move. I was so upset. This was probably the cheekiest, not even cheekiest, just the most well played magic phase. Uh, it didn't help that he got six hits on the Rock a Rock and got that one wound he needed, and I couldn't make a five up armor save. And he also he had his giant in range, and he, he got a one on the giant and didn't do any wounds. I was like, I was feeling so frustrated at this point. I'll tell you what. So unfortunately, the Rock Rock dies before it gets to go to combat. Brilliant play by my opponent. I, I, I got to give it on. That, that, was, that was well done. So these guys have no problem killing uh, the Titanic Southern. And uh, it sort of missed what happened with the Tuskers, but I was definitely flummoxed at this point. But actually, this picture helps anyway. As you can see, the Tuskers roll brilliantly, um, and they're able to break. They just roll like animals, honestly. I mean, they had a decent amount of attacks, and somehow they just rolled hot. So they ended up breaking the one in the front and the flank, and they. I, one of the things that just helped is my opponent just couldn't do a lot of wounds to me, which, again, the Resilience 5 on the Tuskers helps with that. So we're able to make the one in the front of the Tusker unit flee, and then pursue the side one, and then this turn we charge into the Kadeem Chariot. Also on Ogre Khan's turn two, no, turn three at this point, sorry, uh, we charge the BSB into the Blunderbuss unit, um, thinking he's not going to kill me, and I'll probably just outgrind him in combat, and then I can just get rid of him that way. Unaware that he would flee and then get caught by uh, the BSB. So that was really cool. So the BSB catches these, guy, uh, these guys and he's able to just rally and look somewhere else and then shoot his pistols too this turn. So that was beautiful. Yep, as you can see, this is the BSB leaving the tribesman unit. Uh, he did not have that far to go with uh, a seven swift stride roll. Uh, so and then uh, since we we didn't have uh, I couldn't shoot it since I couldn't shoot at the great bull this turn too I was also thinking I'll just use my bombed ears they're just gonna get rid of these dogs and then we're gonna be ready next turn with the overs to do something 
Uh, the cannon is, you know, just going to shoot at one of the giants. Um, or maybe, I, I think I wanted to shoot the bull, but I wanted to get some wounds on the giant. I don't know. It was tough. There's so many targets in this list. And I want to say the Scratapult was just going to shoot at that um, unit of the Basil Cavalry and just try and do some wounds on them. So in the magic phase, I put Break the Spirit on this guy to try and keep him as far away as possible so he doesn't want to fly and take possibly some DTs. Um, I get another Totanic Summon off. This one I couldn't you know, use to chaff these guys, but I, I kind of wanted to get them close anyway. Uh, and then the cannon shot, uh, hit, wounded, and did four wounds to a giant. Uh, that would have been nice on the, the bowl, but I, I think I was just thinking I needed to do wounds. Obviously, these you know these giants don't have Aegis saves. But you know what I was thinking? I was thinking this turn, it's facing away from me, so I get the plus one to hit against it. That's probably why I wanted to shoot this guy. Is since I'm shooting into his rear, uh, rear or flank, I, I can't think what the, what the cannon is. I didn't have to worry about the soft the, the cover from the shield. That way I could be hitting on a three, wounding on a two. That's probably why I did that. Because against the normal bull of Shimon, I was only hitting on a four. So, I don't know. It did four wounds. That's pretty dang good, I guess. Uh, I want to say this is the B... Oh, no. This is the Scratapult doing some wounds to these guys. It did hit and wound. That was great. Um, the BSV shooting didn't do anything. The Tuskers are able to kill the Kadim Chariot, and they overrun to me right there. And then this is going into Infernal Wars turn four. So, um... He turns the Anointed, and he just kind of reforms them and moves them over to the side. He moves up his Basil Calvary to be kind of more far away. And, yeah, I think that's about it. And then he, and he just kind of starts surrounding me with his bulls. He's, he is able to fly March his general, and he doesn't take any DTs, which was unfortunate. And as you can see, he's uh, chaffing with his armored giant into the tribesmen. So uh, these guys, I want to say Raven's Wing to be right here. Uh, he gets Breath of the Corruption off on his bolt. And then uh, I can't remember exactly how or why a model is gone here, but there is one gone. I can't remember why. I don't think he sacrificed. Did he, he didn't even sacrifice one of these guys, did he? Maybe. I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm a uh, really random picture there. And uh, Breath of Corruptions and Flaming Breaths, uh, the Bombardiers to get rid of two whole models. So uh, not the worst result that could have happened, that's for sure. And this is already kind of going into Ogrecon's turn four, which I charged the giant. Cannon misfires, um, can't shoot next turn, and I just turned, you know, I turned my bombardiers around to shoot at the general. I moved my BSB over to shoot at the general, um, and then I charged with the tusker. Or no, I kind of charged the tuskers. The BSB was in the way. I think the tuskers just move up, uh, up and over to try to be as far away from possible from the the, the bulls because or the uh, the Turok because I did charge the truck in the rear with the uh, Totemic Summon on the odd chance that they can't kill it. And yeah, as you can see, we've uh, charged the Armored Giant with the Tribesman. So, ah, oh man, we're able to put one more wound on this bull. He was able to take a wound off earlier from that beautifully played Pentagram of Pain. And yeah, I think this was the the BSB shooting now. He couldn't get him. I was so bummed. And then obviously the cannon can't shoot this turn, which was just such a bummer. Ugh. I don't know why I took a picture of my flux card for the first time in the game. Uh, this guy comes in, does two wounds, and then properly gets beat to death. And this is going into Ogrecon's turn five. So he charges the tribesmen with his bulls. And he try uh, charges the flank of my BSB con, so that's fun. Uh, I fled with the bombardiers. I um, got past the tribesmen, and then you know, kind of stuck right in the middle right now. This is another picture that my opponent took. Uh, the 
dead pile on the other side of the room is all my opponent's infernal boards. Um, but what is alive is in the upper right hand corner, my opponent still has a unit of Vassal Cavalry that is alive. It got hit by their Scratapult on Ogrecon's turn four, fled again, but still has the Shaman in it. So if he does a rally, he could always threaten the objective right there. Uh, my opponent gets Hand of Glory off on his big bow, or his, uh, sorry, his little bow. Uh, and he gets Breath of Corruption off on his, uh, his uh, Prophet on his Great Bull. And Combat, it's just a, a disappointment, I guess you could say. So, basically, my opponent challenged, or issued a duel with his BSB, which I accepted with my Shaman, because I'm thinking, oh, he put his bowls on the wrong side, so I can negate all of the Great Bull's attacks. Um, you know, I took some impact hit wounds from the, the Great Bull, and then I can just duel out with the Shaman, who, you know, he's got the Ritual Blood Letter, so he has to go to the Ghost of Guard, so I can, you know, I can maybe do a wound or two to him. I couldn't get anything on the BSB. He didn't do anything to me. It ends up really just coming down to a a steadfast break test, and I just can't pass a disciplinate check. And uh, I guess disciplines, no, yeah, disciplinate, yeah, disciplinate check. And I, fl I, I flub it, and I have to flee. So the BSB gets to capture or you know, catch the um, bombardiers, and then the great bull will show up with the prophet, overruns uh, to be right in front of the scratapult. The BSB combat goes okay. He, I, I want to say he maybe takes a wound. Uh, he dishes uh, a few back in return pretty nicely, and so he gets rid of one of the one of the uh, anointed. Um, but he couldn't, and he hit. I think he lost by one, passed his break test, could not pass the test to turn around though. So that was uh, a bit annoying. And yeah, so unfortunately, this game is not looking great. Uh, but I got a couple kind of last, this is a, another picture to kind of show what it's uh, kind of looking like from the other side. So uh, I make one more play. I charge a Scratapult into this guy, hoping to maybe get the suit with impact hits or with the, the Rhino, but no dice. Can't do that last wound on this thing. And he gets to turn around. These guys just pummel my BSB to death, so that sucked too. And then on his turn six, he's able to uh, basically just contest the objective up here. And uh, that's all she wrote. I try shooting the cannon, but I just I can't get anything. Um, so uh, this is where the game ends. So with the objective ended up being contested, this game is an Infernal Dwarf 17-3 victory. Uh, yeah, I mean, just, uh, there was kind of a lot of hot dice all over this game. Um, I mean, certainly my cannon turned up a couple times, turned down, turned down a couple times. Uh, the cultism magic phase was pretty spot on most of the time. Uh, the witchcraft, uh, I feel like none of the spells ever got to do anything because I had to just spell them quite a bit. Um, but yeah, uh, very interesting game for sure. And I uh, want to thank everybody for watching and I want to... Thank my opponent for uh, another great game. This is the was pretty much the third game I got to have in a row with him. So got to have quite a bit of contact with Infernal Wars lately. So everybody, thanks for watching as usual. And I hope you have a good one. And you'll see me soon with another Ninth Age Battle Report.